Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so I'm using a 20 by 20 inch canvas and the video that I did previously was a rainbow swipe on a black and white swirled background. So I'm sticking with the black and white swirled background, but I'm just gonna do one ring pour using three compartments in my split cup. And I'm just gonna use red, orange, and yellow. And they're the colours that a lot of you have written to me about and said, why don't you do more red, more orange and more yellow? So I listened to what you said and I'm really happy to produce this piece today. So I've got my colours. Let's see what we can create. So I'm just going to prepare my split cup. I'm going to have one compartment with white, one with black and one with a mixture of white and black. And then I'm going to do one large ring pour on the surface of the canvas before adding my swipe colours. All my colours are mixed with Floetrol. Three parts Floetrol, one part paint. So I'm just going to do a really wide ring pour now. And you can see the colours, just black and white, coming out from the cup onto the canvas. I'm just going to do really wide lines, really wide circles. And then I'm going to stretch this out slightly before adding my colours. Now my center's a little bit dark, so I'm just gonna use the leftovers from the cup because there's more white in my cup. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit more detail just in the middle, just to increase those lines. So when I stretch it out, there's some more detail in the middle of the creation. Okay, that's good. I'm really happy with that. I'm just going to add some more black paint just around my edge. And what I would say, it really doesn't matter what colour this would have been, because this part is going to go over the edges and off the canvas. The focal point is the middle of the canvas, so that's where I'm going to really swipe. But before I swipe, I'm just going to stretch out some of this design now. And adding that black paint will help with the flow of the paint that's already on the canvas. It's going to help it travel on the canvas as I stretch it out. But I'd really like to keep some of those lines. So I'm just going to rotate my canvas in a circular motion. And you can see that that black paint is helping the paint that's already laid on the canvas travel to the edges without really distorting the lines that have already been created. So I'm happy with that. I don't need to fully cover the canvas at this stage because I'm going to use my swipe colours and then when I stretch it out I'm going to be looking at the composition. So I'm going to take one colour at a time. There's only three colours that I'm swiping with. I'm going to layer the red, then the orange and then the yellow. And then I'm using titanium white mixed with Australian Floetrol. So one part paint to three parts Australian Floetrol for my swipe. And I'm just going to swipe that over the top of the paints. I'm going to use my spatula or palette knife, shall I say. I'm going to cover my palette knife in the titanium white mixed with Australian Floetrol. And then I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm literally going to rest it on top of those colours. And I'm going to just glide it across that paint. I'm not pressing too hard. This is literally just gliding across on top of the paint that's already layered. I'm not pressing too hard because there's no need to. But as you can see, with that combination, 
cells are already being created. And let me just take you in, just so you can see what I can see at this moment. They're gorgeous, that red's really popping through. The yellow's maintained its colour, it's not going green. And what I want to do, I want to just do one more line so I can swipe it across. But I'm going to do it from, I think I'm going to do it from about here. I'm going to layer my colours one at a time and then I'm going to swipe down. Again, just remember, allow your palette knife to rest on top of the paint and glide it across the paint and down the canvas. Don't press too hard at this stage. And you can see all those cells already creating and popping through. Don't worry about the edges because they're going to be tipped off the canvas when we stretch out the design and really look at the composition and the creation and the pattern that you want to create when you're stretching it out. There's a few air bubbles, so I'm just using my torch to pop those air bubbles before I stretch this design out. Okay, so the fun part. And what I would say, if you watch me regularly, I always say this, don't rush. Just be in the moment of your creation. Connect with that piece and just take one edge at a time. You'll see that I'm tilting it back and forth, back and forth. And I'm doing that because I'm almost walking that paint across that canvas without it kind of folding over on top of each other and creating like a muddy creation. And then when I'm happy with one of the edges, I rotate my canvas and I then start looking at the other edge. I'm not really in a rush with this. I want to be able to have a good balance of the colours. I really want to showcase the red, the orange and the yellow with a combination of the black and white swirls. So I'm just taking one edge at a time, moving the paint back into the middle of a canvas and then stretching it out again. And you can really feel the weight of where that paint is when you're holding that canvas straight. And I do that several times. I tip it up to move the paint and then back again on itself to bring the paint back into the canvas, into the center, to allow me to move it to other areas of that canvas, tilting it side by side, walking that paint as I go. And then I rotate the canvas and then focus on the other edge. So what I would say is I do this until my canvas is fully covered on the surface and then I'll look at the detail. So you can see on your screen now, the left hand side, the bottom of that corner is a bit muddy. I don't really like it. So I'm intending to tip that completely off. It's not muddy, but it's just not, it's not the kind of the pattern that I really want. So. I'm not going to stop tilting the other corners off first because I really want to stretch those colours and those lines out and then I will go back and focus on the detail.
Okay, so I'm really happy with this. I'm just going to stretch this over. I'm really loving the cells that are within the, the red, the orange and the yellow sections. But I do want to keep some of those black and white lines that I've created with my ring paw to begin with. So I'm just tilting some of that over the edge. And then what I will do is I will bring the paint back into the middle of the canvas to allow me to move more of that paint over in the other corner and down off the edge. So I think what I'll do is I'll move it around this way so you can see. And it's the corner to your left, the bottom left that you can see. That's the corner that I'm really not happy with or focused on. But that's okay because I know I've got enough paint on my canvas to be able to tilt that off the edge and to have a really good pattern and composition left over. Again, just to emphasize, don't worry about rushing it. The consistency of the paint will mean that it's a lot slower when you're moving it on the canvas, but that's okay. Just take your time and stretch off whatever side you want first. As I said, my intention is to move that corner completely off, just to expose a little bit more of those black and white lines. And then I will place my canvas down and really step back and look at that design and if I'm happy with it, then I'll stop. If not, I will stretch it out even more. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I'm really happy with this. But you know what? I forgot to film a close up of the wet version but I do have my dried version here so you can see exactly how it dried and exactly how we've managed to create a balance of lacing and lines. And that red is just gorgeous because those cells and those lacing just pop through all of those colors. And I'm really happy with the balance of the black and white. I wanted the focus to be just those three colors of red, orange and yellow. And I think I've achieved that by the balance of the black and white lines and then the colours of the lacing. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what other colour palettes shall I use using this same technique. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you have a great week ahead. Be kind to yourself and I hope to see you again in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Take care everyone. Bye.